CIA agent Trinan is well known to anyone who has ever seen the film Tess is authorized to declare. In August of the 84th year, a spy detective appeared on the screens of Soviet television, and the success of the ten-part film was simply fantastic. During his show, the streets of towns and villages were empty. Everyone was in a hurry to see the continuation of the exciting battle between Soviet and American intelligence officers, so that later they could discuss it with their family, friends and at work. But few people knew then that Trinan had a real prototype. Who he is and what his fate is, then, in our video. A curious fact is that the day of the beginning of the spy series was not chosen by chance, since this day coincided with the opening ceremony of the 84th Olympic Games in Los Angeles, in which Soviet athletes did not participate. Recall that in this way the USR authorities struck a retaliatory blow. They felt that it was necessary to act symmetrically in relation to the United States. They boycotted the games of the 80th year and the USR and its allies would boycott the games of the 84th year. The reason for the crisis was the entry of Soviet troops into Afghanistan in the 1979. The famous TV series Tess is authorized to declare was filmed based on the novel of the same name by Julian Semenov, written in the 79th year. The author based it on real events two years ago. And the real protagonist of this spy drama was an American CIA agent Alexander Ogorodnik, who worked under the pseudonym Trinan and was exposed in the 77th year. In the case of Soviet counterintelligence, Ogorodnik appeared as an agronomist. In the 79th year, the king of spy detective Julian Semenov was offered to write a new novel about this story on a documentary basis. He was invited to the KGB and familiarized with the case materials. Semenov, having familiarized himself with the essence of the case, said, I understood the main thing, I'll deal with the rest. Roman Tess is authorized to declare. It was written in just 15 days. However, no matter how fascinating the version of Julian Semenov was, the real life of an American agent under diplomatic cover turned out to be much more interesting. I think many of you will be curious to know the true spy story of Alexander Ogorodnik who worked under the codename Trinan. Alexander Ogrodnik was born in 1939 year in Sevastopol in the family of a career naval officer. The guy decided to follow in his father's footsteps and entered the Leningrad Nakamov College, and after graduating with a gold medal, he entered the higher engineering and technical school named after him, Franz. But due to the sharp deterioration of his eyesight, he had to forget about his military career forever and completely change his field of activity. Without thinking twice, Alexander took advantage of the quota and became a student at the prestigious Institute of International Relations. At Megimo, Ogorodnik was an excellent student and even graduated from several courses as an external. It seemed that life was a success, but the years spent studying at college were missed and the ambitious gardener was tormented by the thought that he was 27 years old, and he was only at the beginning of his career. The only way to improve the situation was to fool around and successfully marry the daughter of some official from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And since Alexander had no experience in amorous affairs, the fame of the conqueror of women's hearts went ahead of him. Soon he proposed to a beautiful Magimo student from a rich diplomatic family, Alexandra Herdunian. By that time, Ogorodnik had completed postgraduate studies, defended his doctoral dissertation and, together with his young wife, went to work in Colombia through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. However, having received the position of only the second secretary of the embassy, the gardener was very upset. He thought he deserved so much more, and, whether out of resentment or simply because of his dissolute nature, our hero more than compensated for his failures in the service with victories on the love front, having secret affairs with the wives of his colleagues. The second secretary dragged himself behind almost every skirt in the embassy. Many people knew about one of these affairs with the wife of an employee of the trade mission, Olga Serova. Their relationship went so far that the couple made a promise to each other, return to their homeland, divorce their spouses, and get married. At the same time, the gardener, masterfully playing the role of a faithful spouse and lover, did not miss the opportunity to go left. In addition to love affairs, Alexander decided to sweeten his life with a new car at the expense of the embassy, 
by buying at one price and indicating an inflated one in the reporting. Fraud, of course, surfaced, and the difference in money had to be returned to the accounting department. But by that time, Ogoranek had no money. This time, entrepreneurial talent came to his aid. He organized an underground business through the mediation of the owner of a local gas station. One bought vodka at a discount in the embassy store, and the second sold it for four times more expensive. And everything would be fine. But the owner of the gas station, a certain senior Uribe, turned out to be a CIA informant. He regularly reported on each of his contacts with the embassy bigwigs. So, through Uribe, American intelligence officers learned about the car scam, and about the difficulties with money, and about the gardener's weakness for female sex. It was then that the professional seductress Pilar Suarez Barcala appeared on the horizon, and the secretary of the embassy fell into the classic honey trap. Sexual espionage has always been one of the most effective tools used by intelligence services around the world at all times. The gardener, smitten on the spot by the beauty of the burning Spaniard, was over the moon with happiness. Secretly visiting cafes, restaurants and the Hilton Hotel with her, the man did not even realize that these passionate meetings with Pilar were methodically recorded on tape by CIA officers. Soon Pilar introduced Alexander to her American friends, such as journalists, who suggested that the gardener write a series of articles in an economic journal. After that, the man received, along with his first fee in a thick envelope, a tempting offer, 10,000 US dollars to an American bank account and a monthly thousand rubles in Moscow in exchange for information about the foreign policy plans of the Soviet leadership. And as a bonus, seeing that Alexander was looking at Polaris, the American agent suddenly added, we know about your affection for this woman. And in the future, we will be glad to see you both as us citizens. Of course, no one refused such a fat kush. And before the end of the diplomatic mission in Colombia, the CIA staff taught Gardner all the spy tricks, caches, appearances, passwords, decryption of radio broadcasts, the use of special equipment. In December of the 74th year, having completed his diplomatic mission, Ogoranek, after saying goodbye to his Colombian lover Pilar Suarez, returned to the USR. The newly minted agent was given a position in the Foreign Policy Planning Department of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, where he would have access to important secret documents. Soon he divorced his wife, took Olga Sarova to him, but the promised wedding never took place because the woman died suddenly and under rather strange circumstances. Six months after her arrival, Olga became seriously ill with the flu and after complications she never recovered. At the insistence of her father and the gardener himself, no autopsy was performed. They say Olga was pregnant, although even then her death seemed very strange to many. The horrifying details of Sarova's death will become known only in a couple of years, when investigators will study in detail all the circumstances of her death and decide on exhumation. As a result, remnants of the poison will be found in the tissues of her body. And that meant only one thing, her lover regularly mixed microscopic doses of poison into her food. What made Agent Trianon send his beloved to the next world? Most likely, the woman began to suspect her lover and guess that he was playing a double game. And since a dangerous witness appeared, the gardener felt vulnerable. He could not allow failure and decided to get rid of the woman he loved by poisoning her. In the 70s, the USR and the USA were in a state of cold war. The slightest conflict threatened nuclear catastrophe. In Geneva, in the 75th year, complex negotiations began, at which the issue of limiting the strategic arms of both belligerents was considered. However, the behavior of American diplomats was so harsh and aggressive that representatives of the USR immediately suspected something was wrong. It was as if the Americans knew in advance what would be discussed at the talks and were well prepared. And this was explained only by one thing. There was a mole in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs who, perhaps, would have worked for the Americans for a long time, if not for one but. On the eve of the KGB, which at that time was headed by Indropov, received an orientation from a Czech intelligence agent Carol Kaver, who infiltrated the CIA and served there in an analytical unit. It was he who gave his Soviet colleagues information about the recruitment of a Soviet diplomat in Colombia under the agent nicknamed Trinan. 
It was also reported that neither the surname, nor the rank, nor the external data of the recruited agent were unknown. Nevertheless, the information was immediately taken into development and engaged in calculating the trader. Three people, including the gardener, were under suspicion. Although at first few people believed that an ordinary employee of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs could organize a leak of information from the department, and while the suspects were being checked, Alexander Ogrodnik, having access to government documents of particular importance, daily filmed 80 sheets of important documents addressed to Brezhnev on a spy camera in the form of a fountain pen, and redirected them to the Americans through caches. Counterintelligence conducted round-the-clock surveillance of the suspects, but the last orientation sent by the Czech agent left no doubt. Trinan was none other than Alexander Ogrodnik, listed in the dossier of the Soviet secret services as an agronomist. He was characterized not only as an excellent specialist, but also as a person prone to greed, duplicity, increased self-esteem, careerism and excessively loving female sex. Thus, Trinan was discovered but they were in no hurry to arrest him yet. The counterintelligence plans were to turn Gardner into a double agent. In the 77th year, before the next round of negotiations on Ossetu, Henry Kissinger, the US Secretary of State and National Security Advisor, arrived in the capital of the USR. He personally knew about the existence of Trianon and highly appreciated his work. After all, thanks to Ogorodnik, the Americans received in advance all the necessary information about the negotiations in Geneva. Diplomatic correspondence, reports of the Soviet ambassador to the United States, documents on strategic planning of relations with China and much more. In addition, the leak of information helped the Americans to take on one of the Soviet intelligence officers working abroad undercover. By this time, the special services had collected a large amount of compromising material on an employee of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. When the gardener was on vacation, an unspoken search was conducted in the apartment. The detention operation was scheduled for the 21st of June, 1977. The arrest took place late in the evening. Trinan was arrested at the entrance to his own apartment on Kresno Presnansky Embankment. The capture group and witnesses broke into the gardener's apartment. The search has begun. The operatives already knew where and what to look for. There was direct evidence, a notebook with encryption, batteries with microfilms, recordings with already decrypted texts and other espionage tricks left their owner no chance of salvation. About two o'clock in the morning, the gardener said that he was ready to admit his guilt. And here the counterintelligence agents made an annoying puncture. They set him down at a table, gave him a piece of paper, and he began to write to the State Security Committee of the USR. Explanation. I, Gardner Alexander Dutrievich, admit. Having written the first line, the gardener at some point clicked a fountain pan, snatched a capsule with poison from it and put it in his mouth. The poison from the CIA lab was lethal. The gardener could not be saved. He died of pulmonary edema after four hours. Thus, the operation to develop a gardener's agent Kadenim agronomist ended in a failure. The only thing the KGB could hope for was that the Americans would not find out about Trinan's death at least in the near future. The Americans really did not find out about the failure of the Trinan, so at the agreed time they tried to leave a transfer for him in a cache on the Lesnetsky Bridge. During the laying of the parcel, counterintelligence agents managed to detain an undercover CIA employee. Martha Peterson. Although her diplomatic status allowed Marta to avoid prison, she was declared persona non grata and expelled from the country. So the story of Trinan ended in the USR. But the CIA believed for a long time that Trinan was alive. And when they finally offered to exchange him for one of the Soviet agents captured abroad, they received a laconic answer through unofficial channels. The gardener is already in the past. Shortly before his death, the gardener wrote in his diary, I will not die decrepit in bed. He didn't plan to live long, so everything worked out according to his expectations. In the year of his death, Trinan turned 38 years old. Why did he choose the path of betrayal, and not a decent life, for which he had all the opportunities? Probably, vanity and greed turned out to be stronger than the instinct of self-preservation.
The gardener was buried at the Kavansky Cemetery of the capital as an ordinary citizen in the presence of close relatives. However, the story did not end there. In March of the 75th year, Pilar Suarez Barcala gave birth to a girl, whom she named Alejandra in honor of her father. And, of course, Trinun's daughter believes that her father worked for the Americans solely for ideological reasons, having become disillusioned with the Soviet regime, wanting freedom for his people. The Gardener's heiress is the author of two books, codename Trigon, which is an embellished biography of the Gardener, a history of dating and relationships with her mother, and My Father is a Russian Spy, based on the diaries of Trinun. And here one thing is unclear. Why the author calls his father, a CIA agent, a Russian spy. The history of espionage dates back several millennia. After all, thanks to the scouts, world leadership has collected and continues to collect the necessary information that affects the course of global historical events.